Am I the jerk for parking in the closest spot? I started working for a municipality that has multiple departments and smaller facilities, sharing a larger parking lot a couple of months ago. Aside from the scattered handicapped spots in front of each facility and the mayor's spot, the parking lot is open. The building my office is located in is shared with another small department. Combined, we have six employees on the far end of the parking lot, so there is plenty of open space. Unknown to me, everyone apparently has their preferred spots. I just park in whatever is closest. Today I pulled in and noticed the first spot closest to our building, opposite the median from the two handicapped spots, had a cone in the middle of it. The cone had been sitting in the median since I started here two months ago, so I didn't think much of it. I noticed a man from our facilities department and asked him if any work was being done in the parking lot today. He replied, no. He mentioned that the baseball fields behind our buildings were busy this weekend, so some children likely put the cone there messing around. I moved the cone and parked as usual. Then one of my staff started getting texts from the other department saying, we put that cone there to save that spot for our manager, and your manager just got out and moved it and parked there. That's her spot, so can you ask him not to park there? Then a few more texts raged about how I had been parking there often since starting. Their manager isn't elderly, isn't obese, nor does she show any signs of mobility issues. I told my staff member to let them know that I said unless the spots are designated handicapped or otherwise officially reserved, I will park wherever I choose. I also mentioned that I am happy to discuss the parking situation with their manager if she wishes. This apparently sent them into a frenzy of telling people I am being an asshole. On any given day, one of the first four spots closest to our building is vacant, so nobody is having to hike to the office. Office politics definitely play a role here, and it's worth considering how your actions might make you unpopular. If the office wants to assign designated parking spots, someone in charge should handle that. Speaking to your manager could help, and if the issue persists, HR might need to get involved. Regardless, you haven't done anything wrong, but having a dash cam might be a good precaution against any potential retaliation. Am I the jerk for dropping out as maid of honor a month before the wedding? To start with, my friend asked me to be her maid of honor during her second wedding. She already got married at the office two years ago, and now they are doing it again, but this time in church. She had a different maid of honor back then. The bride and I were best friends as children, however our bond is not as strong anymore. To be completely honest, we do not have anything in common anymore. There is not much trust, at least from my side. Even the conversations are awkward if they are not about the wedding. It feels like we have outgrown each other at this point. The main reason I want to quit is her behavior towards me. Recently we came back from her bachelorette trip, which I planned on my own because all her friends ignored my questions on the group chat I created. She barely spoke to me and even then we managed to argue twice. The whole trip was all she asked for and more. Because she asked for a lot and I had to keep the budget low, I paid for a lot from my own pocket. This was not a problem for me until she threw a hissy fit in the club I already paid for because she and her three other friends did not like the music and threatened to leave. They would also spend most of the time either outside or next to the table. The club I had to pick on my own was the most popular one in that city with regular club music. Every person who ever had to plan something like that understands the pain of it, and seeing how ungrateful she was made me cry, even though I am not someone who cries easily. She has been making smaller or bigger comments that made me feel upset and worthless ever since I agreed to be her maid of honor. Another thing that bothered me was how invasive she was. She would try to call me almost every day to talk about the stuff we already agreed on or about things not even related to the wedding that I had to ask about just to fill the uncomfortable silence. She would also never ask about me or my life, even though she knew I was fighting depression and having issues with my father. Whenever I could not pick up, she would complain to me about it later. She honestly made me scared to check my phone sometimes. She also owes me a lot of money for little favors I have been doing for her, like buying her daughter two dresses for the wedding. She honestly thinks that I am rich because I moved out of my country and can afford it, which I cannot. The only reasons why I was chosen as a replacement for her last maid of honor that come to my mind are either her mother, she was always very fond of me, or my supposed fortune. Either way, we are a month away from the wedding, and I honestly do not think I can be a part of it. I also do not want to waste more money on it. The friendship we used to have is almost non-existent at this point, so it is not like I am going to lose my best friend. So am I the asshole for stepping down from the wedding? You are not the cause of this issue. It's time to cut your losses and move on. Send her or her mom a Venmo request for all the money she said she would pay back. Then, step down and ghost her because she is absolutely just using you and is not a true friend. Am I the jerk for requiring my roommate to start paying for the Wi-Fi because she makes us turn it off at night? I, a 28-year-old female, am getting tired of having to turn off the Wi-Fi at night for my roommate, a 24-year-old female, who says she's concerned about 5G and electromagnetic fields, EMFs. My roommate is already very much an organic-style hippie. She is against using harsh chemicals for cleaning and is often unaware of the sticky messes she leaves behind. I understand that I need to communicate better and tell her these things bother me. 
but I feel like it's best to pick and choose my battles. The thing that has become very bothersome to me is that she now requires me to turn off the Wi-Fi at night because she's worried about EMF and 5 jet. In my head, that's more of her problem than my problem. I also pay for the utilities because I'm aware of our financial differences, and I have never requested that she pays me for any of it. At night when the Wi-Fi goes off, I have to use my hotspot. I've now run out of my own data for hotspot on multiple occasions, and it charges me extra when I go over. So now I'm paying for both Wi-Fi and extra data so I can continue to use the internet after she goes to bed. We agreed that I would turn off the Wi-Fi before I go to bed since I go to sleep later than she does, and she would turn it back on when she wakes up because she wakes up before I do. Most of the time when it's late at night, I feel tired and don't want to have to walk out of my bedroom into the living room and turn off the Wi-Fi. So, I got in the habit of turning it off while I was still more awake but having to rely on my hotspot. I understand that it must be a first world problem that I have to go click a button, but I find it quite annoying and irritating. I used to use my Alexa as my alarm clock, but she won't work unless she's connected to Wi-Fi. If you know how to make Alexa work for the alarm without Wi-Fi, let me know. I have even discussed moving the router to a different area of the apartment so it's further away from her room, but she still says no. She wants it off at night. I offered to buy her some sort of EMF blocker that I found online to help her concerns, but again she says no. I am becoming annoyed and frustrated because I feel like it's more of an inconvenience. If she doesn't turn the Wi-Fi on in the morning when I have meetings right away, then I have to wait for it to load up, and I'm stressed. I understand I can wake up a little bit earlier and turn it back on, but it's just so annoying to have to click a button when it could just stay on. I have decided she must start paying for the Wi-Fi since I am having to overuse my data. I'm worried that she'll think I'm retaliating, and in a sense, I guess I am. I just don't feel comfortable paying more than I should for something that shouldn't be occurring in my mind. I have tried my best to make her feel heard, but I feel like this is just a matter of wearing a foil hat. Even if we turn off our Wi-Fi, how do we not get exposed to the EMF from the surrounding apartments to our left, right and below us? I don't really see how it can make much of a difference just turning ours off. Nothing you have done here makes me think you are the jerk, but you really need to stand up for yourself. It's clear you're prioritizing her needs above your own, and she will never do the same for you. Considering you're paying for utilities and dealing with her irrational demands, you're clearly being taken advantage of. It's time to set boundaries and not cave into her unreasonable fears. It's your right to live comfortably in your own home. Am I the jerk for using a birthday gift for myself? A bit of background. I am a 40-year-old female living with my 50-year-old male boyfriend for almost two years. We have been together for four years. He has twin daughters who are 17 years old. My boyfriend shares custody of his twin girls. Their mother lives across town. Everything is amicable, but I don't have a relationship with the girl's mother beyond hi. How are you? Pleasantries. The girls and I get along just fine as well, but they have both their parents, so I am certainly not in that role for them. The girl's prom was a couple of months ago, as was my birthday. For my birthday, the twins scheduled to have my vehicle professionally detailed. I was a bit surprised, as their mother has never chipped in on anything they've ever gifted me, but she helped organize and pay for the gift. However, it all made sense when they almost immediately afterward asked to drive my vehicle with their dates to the prom. I have never been married, nor do I have any kids of my own. The house we live in and the automobile I drive were all purchases from the perspective of a single person with a good job and no dependents. It does not matter what it is specifically, but it is not an inexpensive vehicle. It is not something I want a pack of high school seniors and their dates running around town in. I told the girls I would rent them a limousine or some other type of vehicle with a driver, but I was not comfortable with them taking mine. They were upset, so their dad told them he would talk to me and talk to them about it again. I reiterated to him that I was not comfortable with it, and the topic I thought was dropped. I had a weird feeling however. I was set to be working out of state over prom, so I rescheduled the detail to where I dropped my vehicle off before I flew out and wouldn't pick it back up again until after I got back. When my boyfriend got home with the twins that night, they immediately called and asked me where my vehicle was. They were upset when I told them. I had already said no to them taking it, so the only reason to be upset was if they were planning on doing it without my permission. When I talked to my boyfriend later that evening, he shrugged my feeling of being lied to off by saying it was obvious that they got the birthday gift for me as a goodwill gesture for borrowing the vehicle, and I was the jerk for making sure they weren't able to, but still taking the gift. Apparently, the girl's mother was also upset and feeling ripped off. I would understand where everyone was coming from if the twins had offered to detail the vehicle in exchange for using it, but this was given to me as a birthday gift before they even discussed borrowing anything. So, am I the asshole? You acted correctly. Those girls in your BF can't be trusted. They were literally trying to take your car without permission for their prom. It's ridiculous they assumed they could take it, and even more insulting they gave a gift just to benefit themselves. Plus, your BF enabling this behavior is a huge red flag. Am I the jerk for telling my spouse that their child might disappoint them once more? My husband, 47-year-old male, and I, 47-year-old female, have been married for a year. We have known each other for 10 years. At first, we were just friends. 
He divorced his ex-wife six years ago. His ex-wife is not a bad person, but they were not right for each other, so they often had arguments. Eventually, they got divorced. Two years after their divorce, we started dating. My husband has a daughter, 24-year-old female with his ex-wife. She stopped talking to him after the divorce, and she had already turned 18 by then. His daughter did not want them to get divorced at all. According to my husband, he never tried to empathize with them during the divorce process. Since my husband was the one who filed for divorce and took the first step, she stopped talking to him. My husband tried a lot to talk to her during this time, but after a while when his daughter moved to a different city for college, they drifted apart. His daughter continued to talk to her mother. My husband would call her from time to time and check in with her about her daughter. Two weeks ago his daughter called him and said she wanted to talk. They met the very next day. She regretted that she had not spoken to him all these years and wanted to make things right between them. After graduating she worked in that city for a year but was fired and went back home. Now that she was here, she wanted to see him often. Of course, he agreed and was very happy. I showed him support. I bought a golden eye Pinot Noir and gave it to him as a gift. We drank it together and celebrated. For two weeks they went to the movies. They went camping. They went out to dinner. I am really happy for them. Yesterday evening he and I were chatting together again. He was talking about the conversation he had with his daughter, and I was listening to him. He was talking very enthusiastically, and at some point in the conversation, it occurred to me that there was a possibility that his enthusiasm might be dashed. My husband did not take it well that she went no contact with him right after the divorce. He was very depressed at the time, and I was there for him, so I know exactly what he was going through. She had let him down before, and I thought about the possibility that she might do it again. At this point he saw my face fall and asked me what I was thinking. I told him that what he was going through was very good, he just had to be prepared for the bad. He asked what I meant, and I told him that this could be a whim for his daughter. I had no malice in saying this, but he did not take it well. He said okay and left. I went after him. I wanted to talk to him, but he said he wanted to go to sleep. We did not talk today either. I do not think I did anything wrong, but I still feel like an asshole. Am I the asshole here? You are the jerk here OP, for planting a seed in his head that will taint his future dealings with his daughter. Do you think he is unaware that things could potentially go wrong? I don't know how else you expected him to take this other than as you spoiling his happiness. No one wants to not have their parents in their life if they can help it. Am I the jerk for taking a little even though I plan on quitting the club? I am a 19 year old female in a service club. I joined because I thought it would be a great way to make a very large college seem smaller. It started off fine, but about two or three months in, it started to get weird. I am starting to feel targeted by the way some of the girls treat me. I love the few friends I have met through my time in it, but I do not feel the need to be in it anymore. The decision to quit has been weighing on my mind. It is a lot of money and time, and I am slowly realizing that it is not as good as it seems. For starters, they all lie about their volunteer hours, which is crazy to me because it is a service club. The entire point is to volunteer and do something you love with your friends. They also do not genuinely care for your well-being as much as they would like to act as they do. I am starting to think that they truly care that much about public perception. I have also been working for a company where we create custom items. I was trying to be helpful and reached out to a girl in the club in charge of an event to try and create the club shirts for said event. She said yes. I went through the entire process with her, but I found out this morning she had gone with a different company without letting me know. I found out through a text in the giant club group chat instead of a courtesy text from her. I do not blame her for going with a different company, but a heads up would have been nice, especially when I had spent time and energy and my company's resources on these items. I had other girls in the club reaching out to me and telling me they liked my design better and wanted to know what happened. I texted her and asked her to share if there was something I could have done better. She simply said no, and that I just was not needed anymore. Great. Thanks for the heads up. We also have a tradition in the club of having bigs and littles, similar to Greek life. My big does not speak to me and has made no effort to make me feel included or comfortable since I joined. It is not a huge deal, but it is just not the best feeling when you are trying to acclimate to a completely new life at college and navigating everything in this club by yourself. Unfortunately, I signed a contract back in December, so I am required to remain in the club for at least another few months. In that time, I will be forced to take a little of my own. I am planning on quitting as soon as my contract ends, but I will make sure my little has a family to be adopted into before I quit. I will also be fully transparent with my little so she understands that it is nothing personal. It is something that I decided before I even met her. Am I the asshole for planning to take a little and then quit right after? You did the right thing, seriously. The behaviors shown go against the foundational principles of the organization they should be representing. If there's no penalty for breaking the contract, that might be a better option than getting a new member involved in those dynamics. Honestly, it's understandable to just walk away from this mess. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.